Good evening, Dairy Township families. I just want to welcome you and uh, say good evening and thank you for the time to listen to this. I um, want to provide you with some updates on where we are in our planning uh, for the next school year and uh, to hopefully answer some of your questions. So first, I just want to thank you all for the input and feedback that you've given over the last several weeks uh, through the surveys. That information has been extremely beneficial to us as we have been planning forward. And as I said, my goal for this overview is to just provide some updates to you and let you know where we are in planning to date and to give you some information about what's next and, and what the next timelines are. So um, just to jump right in, at this time, we are planning for a uh, return to face-to-face -face instruction um, with the health and safety measures in place to the maximum extent feasible, as well as providing an online option for families who, who can't or, or choose not to send their students back uh, in a full face-to-face -face, uh, environment. And as I'm sure you've heard, um, the governor on Wednesday implemented some additional restrictions, including the requirement to telework when possible. Um, please know that while many of our team will be shifting to working from home as much as possible, we also know that we are planning for a school year and that you, you need to get in touch with us uh, for various reasons. And there are many things that have to be done here uh, on site. So while we're still operating, I, I want you to know that we're still operating fully and we'll remain able to respond to and answer questions uh, and needs as they arise. So I just encourage everyone to continue to reach out to us as needed via phone call or email and uh, we will respond to you uh, as quickly as possible. So we know that many things remain uncertain and are ever changing. But one thing that we do know is that with all the models of return that, that we're working toward and, and I'll be sharing with you, we will need to be flexible and we will need to be pre prepared to shift and adjust as quickly as possible and as needed. And we are working on developing plans so that we can transition very quickly and smoothly from one scenario to another. And for the foreseeable future, school, even in that face-to-face -face style, will look and feel very different. This may be hard to accept for many or all of us, and it will cause us at times to grieve and to uh, miss the, the way it used to be. Hopefully, we will be back to a more normal environment in, in the near future, but until that time, we will make the most of what we have, and as they say, we will make lemonade out of lemons. I also encourage us to look at the opportunities. Yes, that is one of our COCA principles and one that we have talked about many times, that has come and is coming from the pandemic. For example, a year ago, we would have said that we were not able to provide a, a viable online learning option for our students K through 12 with our own staff and curriculum. And yet here we are a year later preparing to do just that. This will be a year of many more opportunities to look at how we do what we do. And my challenge to all of us, and that includes myself, is that we stay focused on our goal of providing the best learning environment for all of our students and doing what we can to do just that. So through this update, I wanna share some general up updates with you, as well as give you more details on timelines and communication moving forward. And please know that we will continue to adapt and adjust as needed as the guidance and the mandates uh, are forthcoming. So the school calendar. The board did approve a revised calendar at their special meeting on Tuesday, July 14th. This moves the start date to Monday, August 31st for our students. This additional week will give our teachers the in-service days um, from August 17th to 19th and August 24th to 28th to address several critical needs as it relates to moving forward in providing the best education and support for all of our students. Based on the feedback from the surveys at the end of the school year with our emergency virtual learning, one of the changes that we made is that all elementary staff will use the Seesaw learning platform and secondary teachers will continue to use Canvas. We will also be working with our staff during those days on teaching in an online environment and providing training on social emotional learning and meeting the needs of all of our students. 
We're still working through details for things like bridge day, new student orientations, and those other things that typically have happened prior to the first student day. And while we know that they will look very different from previous years, we are still hoping to be able to provide them in some fashion to aid in the transition for our students. Athletics at this point are moving forward with the health and safety measures that are in place, and we will continue to monitor and will follow any guidance and mandates that we receive uh, in that regard. Our main driver is the health, the safety, and emotional well being of, of all of our students, our staff, and our community members. And as noted earlier, we are develop, working to develop the health and safety protocols to the maximum extent possible to help mitigate as much risk as possible. We do know and acknowledge that we cannot eliminate all risk with any form of in-person instruction, but we do believe this is the best option, along with providing that virtual option for those families who can't or don't feel comfortable sending their children back. We feel it's the best option to provide for the academic as well as the social emotional uh, well-being and needs of our students. We also know and value all of our staff who give of themselves daily to provide for our students and are working to do what we can to our, ensure our environment is as safe as possible for them as well. We continue to receive and review daily updates, guidance, and information from our local, state, national, and world experts and leaders to help us navigate this return to school. As we all know, this information is ever evolving and many factors play into that ever-changing landscape. I want you also to know that we do have a local pandemic team, which is comprised of constituent representatives, including teachers, support staff, parents, nurses, local health professionals, administrators, and school board members, who are working to review and provide input into our health and safety plan that will be used to re-guide our reopening health and safety measures. The health and safety plan for reopening must first be approved by the local school board and then after approved must be sent to the Pennsylvania Department of Education for approval and posted on our district website. Approval of that health and safety plan must occur before any in-person instruction can begin. This plan is going to be coming to the Board of School Directors at their meeting on Monday, July 27th for approval. The plan right now uh, as I said, looks at how various health and safety aspects will be addressed in both yellow and green phases of reopening. And the items that are noted um, must be considered and some must be addressed to the maximum extent possible. So what are some of the things we're doing? And I, this is not gonna be comprehensive at all. It just gives you an idea of some of the things that will be in the health and safety plan and some of the things that, that we're, um, doing and working toward uh, regarding health and safety. So the, the classrooms and the buildings, school buses and high touch point areas, all will be disinfected and, and cleaned at least once per day and some many more times uh, than once a day. We've purchased new cleaning supplies, tools and equipment for sanitation and disinfecting of all the classrooms, the buildings and, and buses. Um, we'll be looking at you know, the high touch point areas of door handles, the manipulatives that are used for instruction, lab equipment, playground equipment, gym and sports gear, um, desks, all of those, of, of those things. So with regard to back to school planning, and again, this portion here will not be addressed as far as what instruction will, will look like in the health and safety plan. That will be in our continuity of education plan which we're um, currently looking to take to the board on August 10th uh, for review. But at this time, um, you can see on the slide, there are three options. At this time, our options that we'll be putting out there are the traditional in-person in face-to-face instruction, or what we can call the near normal, or a fully online option. And while we're not offering a blended option at this time, we are planning for that for such a time as we are needing to go to a more restrictive mode. Additionally, given the fluidity of current, the current situation, we will be able to provide parents more information as we get closer to the start of the year about what the blended learning would look like if and when we, it's needed. 
for example, by, by mid eight, uh, August, we will be able to provide you with how that AB schedule would be split during the week. And the AB schedule I'm referring to is what you um, responded to in, in one of the surveys for the, the student population would be split into an A group and a B group. And the A group would come um, two days a week and the B group would come two days a week. So you will know um, how that split will be. If you remember from the surveys, one was a Monday, Tuesday, let's say a Monday, Tuesday for one group and uh, Wednesday, Thursday or a Thursday, Friday for the other group. One was an alternating day. Um, we will also be able to let you know which students will be in, would be in each group if and when we need to go to that, that blended model. Um, and we will be working to keep children from the same family in the same group to help with your planning. We feel that's important to give you that information, even though we're not planning right now to start the year in that fashion. Um, so that if we would need to transition to that quickly, you have the information you need to make um, appropriate plans uh, accordingly. And also I wanna note, and we'll address this a little bit later too, if we do move to a, a blended schedule, our families with students receiving special education services would still have the option of coming every day. So a little bit just briefly about what does that in-person, that near normal or traditional in-person instruction look like? It would be five days a week and it would be full days. Um, masks would be required for all students and staff uh, in the buildings at all times and that would only the only uh, um, exception to that would be when students are eating. Um, there would be that daily cleaning that I talked about, buses between runs, classrooms, and and hand washing, good hygiene. Uh, also, we'll be looking at um, modifying how transitions happen um, at each level and how students and move throughout the the building to reduce. Uh, the numbers in the in the hallways and large areas and also to um, control the flow of traffic. Our online option, um, our staff did, <clears throat> excuse me, did an absolutely amazing job in the spring, shifting very quickly to that online environment. Honestly, it was almost overnight. Um, but we also acknowledge that this was not our best teaching and nor was it our best student learning. It truly was emergency virtual learning. What we will be offering moving forward will be a fully online program taught by our teachers following the district curriculum. It will have a articulated schedule, clear expectations for attendance and participation, and all online courses will be graded. Now, while instruction does and will look different online versus face-to-face, -face, Many of the expectations for students will be the same as it is for those in the face-to-face -face environment. <clears throat> All staff will receive more training and support on teaching in an online environment so that everyone is prepared in the event we need to shift to a completely virtual or even that blended environment. So I'm sure many of you are wondering how we would be planning to handle breakfast and lunches considering those are potentially our larger group um, spaces. That's a great question. At this time, we are planning for all of our elementary students to eat in classrooms. And uh, we will be expanding the eating areas in the middle and high school to allow for social distancing and to reduce the number of people in any one area. Um, also, we're planning to modify our menu options for at least the start of the school year to be more of a grab and go type menu option. More information will be forthcoming as we get closer to the start of the school year. According to our food service director, Mr. Hummel, he stated, our new fall menu is certainly cool. Our all new cold menu will feature many new entrees like Thai turkey wrap, grilled chicken Caesar salad, protein power pack, hummus platter, Tex-Mex bento box, and many other fun and tasty cold menu options. More information will be forthcoming soon on our food service website. But that just gives you a little bit of insight into uh, what the cafeteria is and what lunches and breakfasts will, will look like. Technology. You know, as I was, <clears throat> excuse me, as I was reflecting 
over the last several months about our current situation and trying to look for the positives and, and the um, silver linings in all of this. One of them was the fact that if we had to have a, a pandemic and, and the situation we have, I'm glad it happened in 2020 and not when I started my career back in the 1980s. Um, certainly back then, when I first started, technology wasn't even a thing as far as t t uh, computers. And we would not have been able to offer anything. We wouldn't even be doing this right now to communicate. So I'm very thankful that we have the technology that we do have uh, in 2020. As far as technology for planning back to school, we know that it is critical in any of the scenarios that we have. Um, due to a refresh of our secondary iPads, we will be able to supply our elementary students with I individual iPads as well. That again will allow those choosing virtual to have a device, but it will also allow a quick transition to virtual if and when needed. And we'll continue to work with our families as we did this spring to ensure that everyone has the technology and the access, <clears throat> excuse me, that they need um, to continue to learn in any format. As I noted earlier, for our students uh, with special needs, we know that distance learning provides unique challenges um, for, for our students who require specialized instruction. And we also know that as we're planning, it's critical that we plan to deliver appropriate education for all students and providing supports as needed. And as I said, even in a hybrid um, model, if and when we have to go to that, we would still look to provide um, instruction for our students with special needs every day in a face-to-face -face setting. So what are some other considerations? Um, face coverings. Currently, it's a state mandate. We are requiring uh, face coverings in all of our buildings at all times. And uh, it, outside on our campus, when social distancing of at least six feet is not, is not possible. Um, I realize that there's a lot of disagreement and angst in society in general about wearing of face coverings, and we all have our own personal feelings about them. However, I am asking that everyone respect um, the, the um, expectation that we will require face coverings to be on, uh, used in our buildings and on our campus when social distancing is not possible. Obviously, we know there may be some that have medical reasons for not being able to wear a, a mask, a face covering, but we will look at other alternatives such as face shields or other uh, options that are out there to ensure health and safety measures and protections for all to the best extent possible. Um, temperature checks, we have been spending a lot of time on this. Um, we do have the capacity, we do have the devices to do temperature checks at school. Um, obviously our nurses will, will utilize them. Um, what we are looking at at this point is that we would, will be asking families and staff to do their own um, health checks and temperature checks at home prior to coming to school. Um, anyone with a fever should not be coming. Uh, to school. And um, then again, we will have the capacity to do temperature checks at school as well. We will also be looking at just reinforcing, encouraging general hygiene, good, good uh, health precautions and, and hygiene precautions. We uh, will have sanitizer available. We will have hand washing uh, more frequently and required. And um, we will also be, as I said, um, requiring different modes of, of transitioning to and from classes um, to help with the health and safety measures. Some other considerations, um, we'll continue to make our decisions based on the information and data that we have and the guidance that we're given. Um, some of those things we, we acknowledge will be within our control and others will be outside of our control. Um, you know, we know as cases go down or stay low, the better chances are that we'll be at that near normal. The more the cases rise, that second wave, that, that will and may limit our options and, and cause us to shift to, to a different option. Um, at this time, 
I did want to let you know that we are not permitting outside groups to utilize our indoor facilities. And you may, you may wonder why. Well, a large part of that is due to the cleaning and sanitizing needs uh, that must occur each day to ensure we are preparing for each new school day for our staff and our students. Um, we are allowing outside facility use requests for, for outside facilities, but all groups must adhere to the face covering and social distancing requirements while on our property. So what are the next steps? Um, our plan is to get the health and safety plan to families as soon as it's finalized. So you can review that information and uh, what will be done in order for you to make the best decision for your family as to whether you will have your child return to the traditional face-to-face -face instruction or choose the online option. Uh, our, again, our board will be reviewing that and approving that at their July 27th meeting. Uh, we will have more information about that board meeting um, next week, so you can be looking for that as well. Again, that, that is the health and safety plan. It is not the continuity of instruction plan um, that will address what instruction will look like. Um, at this time, if a family does choose an online option to start, we will be requiring them to stay in that virtual environment until a marking period or trimester break. Um, and then at that time, if desired, the family can opt to return to a face-in-face -face instruction or they can choose to remain in the virtual environment and then they would just re remain in that until the next marking period or trimester break. Um, families who start in the face-to-face -face or choose to start in face-to-face, -face, they may opt to move to a, a virtual, that virtual online environment at any time. But then again, if, if that happens, um, you know, three or four weeks into the, the school year, then you would need to stay in that virtual environment until the marking period or trimester uh, break. We will be sending communication immediately following the board meeting um, after the finalization of the health and safety plan, which will then ask, uh, include a survey asking families to select an option for instruction for face-to-face -face or virtual for the start of the 2020-21 school year, as well as gathering information from families as to their plans for transporting your child to and from school, and probably a, a question about lunch uh, as well. We, we know from the surveys that many families were willing and able to transport your children to help reduce the number of students on the bus and to increase the social distancing that we can do on the buses, and that is greatly, greatly appreciated. So thank you for that, that offer. Um, we need all of this information, <clears throat> excuse me, by the end of the day on August 1st, so that we can develop appropriate plans moving forward. Um, as I'm sure you can imagine, depending on what is chosen, we then have to go back and look at classroom assignments, student schedules, bus transportation routes and schedules, and we need to do that all in those weeks between August 3rd and August 31st. So I know that only gives parents and families about five days to, to make some choices, um, but hopefully this information is helping and um, can help you start thinking about what you might choose. And then as soon as possible, we will let families know transportation information, teacher assignments, student schedules um, that may and most likely will be later than normal, but that's because we're needing to, to do um, some reworking based on the information we get back on August 1st. So please know, thank you uh, for your time, but know that we may need to adjust and move from one fat format to another extremely quickly. But having all this information, all the planning that we're doing, all the scheduling and all the options that are being developed now will help us adjust as we may need to in the weeks and, and months ahead. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Thank you for your support, your patience, your commitment as we continue to walk this journey together. Um, it is all uncharted territory. There is no right or wrong. Um, we're just trying to navigate everything and, and make the best decisions possible for, for, for all. And I do also acknowledge this was a lot of information in this presentation. Rest assured, it is being recorded and it will be placed on our back to school page on our district website for future reference. 
So for now, please take care. Enjoy the remaining days and weeks of summer. Um, take time to enjoy your family and relax and um, look forward to communicating with you in the near future. Thank you uh, very, very much and have a great evening.